Medistand. Understanding Medicine. I'm Professor Azizur Rahman, and in our series of lectures on radiology for internists, we are discussing various abnormalities on X-ray. And as I said in my earlier lecture, that X-ray is actually radiology it is very very vast field. So I will be obviously focusing on basic facts which an internist uh, should know. Uh, I think it is very important that internists should be able to read these X-rays. Although of course uh, the professional radiologist report is also available, but you must need learn the skill to read the access yourself. So I'm going to discuss two important conditions. One is a group of two disorder called chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. And these two conditions, uh, actually this common uh, basket of uh, COPD has got two conditions included in it. Uh, emphysema and chronic bronchitis both are caused by smoking and air pollution and occasionally there may be pneumothorax and that is presence of free air in the lungs so i will show you various x-rays and i hope that you are able uh, to recognize these findings whenever you encounter these x-rays uh, I think before we uh, can understand the radiological abnormalities in these two conditions, let's first define these two conditions. Both are characterized by airway obstruction. Now, unlike uh, bronchial asthma, where there is mostly uh, airway obstruction is mostly reversible, in COPD, uh, obstruction is mostly irreversible. There may be only 10 to 15 percent reversible component so it is mostly irreversible chronic airway obstruction there are two categories emphysema and chronic bronchitis both have slightly different pathology and different clinical and radiological manifestations but one must remember since both are caused by smoking and air pollution so in majority you will perhaps have both conditions coexisting. It may be possible to see emphysema in its pure form because emphysema may be sometimes caused by alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency without even the history of smoking. Uh, although these patients who have alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency, they also develop emphysema when they have additional history of smoking. So expect to have a bit of both and only in occasional cases you may have pure emphysema or pure chronic bronchitis. What is emphysema? The pathology of emphysema is this destruction of alveolar septa and distension of air. When there is destruction of alveolar septa, the overall uh, surface uh, from where the gas exchanges that is reduced and there is distension of air spaces because that traction which keeps these alveoli small they, that is lost and they tend to dilate so airway spaces are dilated and this will actually translate into some morphological changes there will be air tapping and physically when you see this patient they might have developed what we call barrel shaped chest that means anteroposterior diameter of the chest which should normally be uh, less than or equal to two-thirds of the lateral diameter that becomes more and it may become actually equal to the uh, lateral diameter so an elliptical chest becomes more or less uh, rounded and these morphological changes they reflect in some radiological changes so you can expect some definite radiological changes in emphysema Whereas in chronic bronchitis, the pathology is chronic irritation of bronchi and that leads to mucosal hypertrophy and increased mucus production. So there is uh, airway narrowing and uh, primarily this would result into hypoventilation and there may not be dilatation of uh, distal air, um, air spaces. And 
it manifests in the form of a chronic product of cough and wheezing and dyspnea. So uh, the manifestations are not typically um, the radiological. Of course, there are some radiological changes, but I guess you can very easily diagnose emphysema on X-ray, whereas chronic bronchitis you can suspect, or you may say this XHS is consistent with the diagnosis of chronic bronchitis, whereas in emphysema the diagnosis is usually more definite. Now these are two X-rays. Uh, I'm sure uh, now if you you can tell that this is the normal person and this x-ray actually I showed in my first presentation this is the normal lung fields normal convex uh, diaphragms and this is the normal vertical dimensions normal sized heart normal radio translucency and normal pulmonary markings so this you have to actually print in your mind uh, so that whenever you see an abnormal x-ray you can compare it with the normal so this one is normal. Now compared to this one, this one is actually emphysema. You can see that vertical dimensions are increased. Uh, of course, they are slightly different scales, but I think from this person, you can tell the vertical dimensions are increased. But more importantly, look at the diaphragm. Diaphragm is low set. Instead of going like dome like, structure it is more or less flat so diaphragms are low set and they are flat they have lost their normal uh, rounded contour similarly on the left side so you can see the same thing on the left side the diaphragms both diaphragms are low set and flattened and lost their dome like structure and lung fields are uh, the vertical lung fields are increased and there is also increased translucency not very obvious in this x-ray but that is one of the radiological features and other radiological feature of emphysema is that heart becomes rather small of course heart does not shrink in its size but since heart is normally oval shaped like this uh, and when diaphragm descends in emphysema the diaphragms they descend lungs are fixed in um, almost a constant inspiratory phase so when diaphragms descend since heart is attached to the diaphragm heart will also be like pulled downward and a globular structure will become more or less tubular structure so the lateral dimension of heart will be reduced because it has been pulled downward so that is why one of the characteristic finding uh, in XHS is tubular heart. Now, those of you who are very, very observant, they might have noticed that this person has these fractured ribs. Uh, so that is not actually related to our discussion, but there is probably fracture of the ribs and then uh, refusion. So um, that is just an incidental finding. So I hope you have now a reasonable idea how to differentiate an emphysema from normal lung. I'll show you actually uh, multiple x-rays so that the impression you get is uh, printed in your mind. Uh, this is the lateral film. Now if you see, uh, normally we do not do lateral film as a routine but of course it can be done in some cases. Now, in this case, this is a case of emphysema. You see these two spaces. This is retrosternal translucency and this is retrocardic translucency. Now, if you remember my first lesson, I told you these are relatively small, usually equal in size. These two translucencies are normal thing, but the size is much smaller. Now, how do we know? that these size are increased of course you can tell if you have experienced and also notice that this spine has become more or less curved more curved than the normal because this patient has got increased AP diameter this patient has got a barrel shaped chest the AP diameter has is increased so of course when you have increased AP diameter these spaces they dilate 
Now, if you compare it with a normal one, so I think then you will appreciate it better. You see not only the sizes of translucencies, but that actual the intensity of translucency. If you compare this, this, uh, uh, this uh, translucency, it is not that translucent as compared to this one because there is more air and less uh, lung tissue here. Similarly, this one is more translucent and bigger. So if you compare with the normal, and I think on this side, you can see both the diaphragms. You can appreciate both diaphragms separately. In this, you can see diaphragms are sort of pressed downward. Diaphragms are compressed downward and flattened, losing normal rounded contour. And if you see the spine, this is definitely more normal looking and less curved. And the AP diameter is also normal. So this is how we can differentiate emphysema from normal person on lateral cell. Now this is another person, one person actually having uh, the X-ray chest which is PA, this is PA film and this is the lateral film. Same person you can see the vertical dimension of lung fields are increased. You see that the diaphragm is this one is a diaphragm. Diaphragm is low set and almost flat. Here also you have low set uh, and flat diaphragm. There is perhaps some adhesion, some fibrous tissue here. And you also appreciate that the heart size is small, rather small, more vertical, tubular. And lung fields are increased in translucency. And this is emphysema and if you see uh, the lateral film, this uh, retrocardiac and retrosternal translucencies are quite prominent. Now, of course, you you have different. Uh, every person has different size of chest. Somebody somebody can be very thin, other could be stout. So, of course, it would vary from person to person, but these are generally the feature. Uh, so, I think this should be very very clear. And you see the, this pulmonary, right pulmonary artery and main pulmonary artery, they are also prominent in this patient because whenever there is chronic obstructive airway disease, there is a possibility of pulmonary hypertension also. Now, uh, let's move on to the next one. This is again emphysema. Uh, although diaphragms are low set, but they have maintained their contour to some extent, the, but of course they are not as convex as they should normally be. So they are low set and slightly flattened. I think the important um, finding in this X-ray which was not present in the previous one is, look at this this part. Normally the apex, the, the, these domes should be like this, like this. The upper part of the chest should be like this. In this case, it appears as if both ribs are lifted. So at the, this effect of lifted and when the ribs are lifted, these ribs also become more horizontal. So this is another feature of emphysema. You can see that the apical part of the lung fields is distended and is the ribs look like as if they are lifted. And the distance between different ribs is also increased. And one of the features which I did not actually describe, one of the features is that if you count the ribs like and these one, normally sixth or seventh rib would actually uh, touch the diaphragm. But in patient with emphysema, it may be eighth or ninth depending upon the severity of emphysema. So this is another abnormality you can expect in patient with emphysema. Another person. Uh, with the uh, emphysema and in this case you see this diaphragm look at this diaphragm this diaphragm is very very flat deformed it is not normal convex and this diaphragm is also flat and look at the vertical dimension there is an increased vertical dimension and see the heart size heart size is definitely reduced and heart morphology heart structure is very much tubular 
there is significantly increased bronchopulmonary markings in this x-ray why so uh, it could depend on the uh, the exposure uh, you know when we do x-ray there's something called exposure now that exposure uh, determines how much white how and versus how much black tissue you see uh, or it could actually be because of additional fibrosis uh, there may be additional fibrosis this patient may have chronic bronchitis as well as emphysema so emphysema is very obvious but increased pulmonary markings they are consistent with uh, additional uh, chronic bronchitis uh, one very very characteristic abnormality in emphysema uh, is the presence of bully bullus is one air space one large air filled space without any lung parenchyma in it uh, bully is when you have multiple of them now if you see this x-ray uh, do you appreciate that this in part and in this part this it appears as if there is pure air there isn't much of lung shadow here here also please so there may be uh, a, an, a, a bullus here and other uh, indirect evidence of bullus is this crowding of this fibrous part this crowding of lung is actually indicative of presence of a bullus here because this is a large air spaced um, uh, air space and this has pushed the neighboring lung into this kind of thing now and this is also you see this this part of the lung appears as if this is compressed this is the white tissue the normal lung tissue appears more than normal uh, diaphragms are flat in this x-ray it may be more obvious there's a big huge huge uh, emphysematous bullus occupying almost half of the lung here also you actually have multiple of them now they may sometimes be uh, difficult to detect why because there is a lung tissue in front and behind the emphysematous bullus uh, if it is big occupying the whole chest anteroposterior then of course it will be very obvious like in this case but most emphysematous bully would be uh, relatively smaller in size and there will be normal lung I mean emphysematous lung in front or be behind this bullus and the the actual the outline may be lost when you see the pfl this will be much more obvious when we do the ct scan what is the importance of these bully they not only provide a radiological sign they also actually are the source of dead space they cause uh, they contribute into dyspnea because there is a air in this big bullus which is not actually taking part in ventilation so this would be responsible for irreversible airway obstruction so this is uh, not a common finding i think maybe one two percent with people with emphysema they have bully and then we label them as bullus emphysema emphysema now this is the ct scan we are going to discuss ct scan in a separate module but just to make your concept clear this is the a big emphysematous bullus another one another one another one another one uh, another one so, so many emphysematous bully and accordingly the lung tissue is compressed now this is not the normal uh, aerating lung uh, tissue this is much compressed because these bully have pressed the lungs and so this one is not ventilating and this one is also not uh, ventilating as it should normally do because this is compressed so i think underperforming so this was uh, emphysema i hope uh, i made some points clear but i'm going to just list them in case you want to attempt a question and what are the signs of emphysema uh, i have shown you and i'll just list them here increased vertical dimension please note down it would the vertical dimension of lung field would depend on the 
uh, height of that person. If somebody is tall, his lung field will be normally uh, more than another person who is short. Okay. Depressed and flattened diaphragm. Okay, this would actually differentiate between a normal tall person and the person with emphysema. A normal tall person will still have a normal contour of diaphragm, but if the diaphragms are uh, depressed and they are flattened and disfigured and lost their normal dome shaped structure, that is highly suggestive. Raised and dome like apices, and I showed you in one of the uh, uh, x-rays the apical part should actually be tapering like this in the plea, but if they become lifted and broadened that is another sign increase radio translucencies because in emphysema there is more air relative to a normal person the amount of air in the lung field is more because of air trapping so you get more uh, blackish shadows that is uh, what we refer to as increased radio translucency small tubular heart because diaphragms are pulled downward since heart sits on the diaphragm the heart is also pulled downward so its normal um, uh, oval shape is converted into tubular shape otherwise heart is normal there may be uh, right ventricular dilatation because of corpomanel but uh, on x-ray you will just see tubular heart lifted ribs uh, because they are constant inspiration, then in some cases emphysematous bully. Uh, this is uh, emphysema. Now we have to take up another condition uh, called chronic bronchitis. Sorry, this is one uh, point left. Increased retrosternal and retrocardic translucencies on lateral films. I showed you a few examples. Now, as I said, uh, now is the time to discuss chronic bronchitis. Now, this X-ray might pass as an X-ray of emphysema also. It, there is definitely emphysema. You can see the flat diaphragm. Both diaphragms are flat and there is increased translucencies. Apices are broadened. But heart isn't that tubular. But there is significant increase in these pulmonary markings. So, uh, it may be difficult or impossible to diagnose chronic bronchitis on X-ray because chronic bronchitis does not cause those vivid abnormalities which emphysema causes. So, diagnosis may not be possible actually without history. The chronic bronchitis is actually diagnosed on history. X-ray is taken as supportive evidence uh, to see if there is something else and of course, uh, we would describe this x-ray as consistent because consistent chronic bronchitis these increase pulmonary marking somebody gave it the description of dirty lungs a normal lung should look nice black but if there's too much white uh, component indicating increased fibrous tissue that may be called chronic bronchitis The radiological signs of chronic bronchitis increase lung markings and dirty lungs and there may be cardiomegaly. You are more likely to see cardiomegaly in chronic bronchitis because of different uh, abnormalities. Uh, chronic bronchitis when advanced, when it is very advanced, it is more likely to cause hypoventilation, hypoxia and there may be chronic hypoxicate, polycythemia that promote uh, corporal manale and right heart dilatation. So you are more likely to see cardiomegaly because of uh, the right ventricular dilatation. But remember, in most patients with chronic bronchitis, you would see some element of emphysema also. What do you see? I just give you a few seconds. If you remember the title of my lecture, it was chronic obstructive airway disease, which uh, there are two conditions included in that. One is uh, emphysema, the other one is chronic bronchitis. We have considered both these conditions. But then I also included pneumothorax. What is pneumothorax? Pneumothorax is presence of free air in the pleura, in the lung. 
Now, if you see this side, this side is pretty normal, normal everything. But if you see this one in the first glance, it might also look normal. But if you see carefully, see this part of the lung, this part, lateral part of the lung fields, there are no lung markings. And you can also appreciate a very sharp border. This is very, very razor sharp border going all, I think, this way. This is actually pleura. So if this is pleura, that means this must be lung and this must be then free air. So this is free air in the lung. This is called pneumothorax. Nemo is air, thorax is in chest. So outside the lung, in the pleura, presence of free air is called pneumothorax. Now, whenever we encounter a patient with pneumothorax, we then look for other things also. Is this pneumothorax small or large? I think in this case, it is certainly not small, but it is not massive either. It is significant enough to push the midline structure to the opposite, opposite side, only slightly. I wouldn't call it a tension pneumothorax, which is a fairly big size, uh, at least moderate, but it hasn't actually shifted the midline structure to the opposite side. So I don't see any signs of um, tension pneumothorax. The signs of tension pneumothorax are basically clinical. If this patient is severely short of breath, then I would consider tension pneumothorax. So please note down this pneumothorax, a very sharp pleural border and free air. How do we know this is free air? Because there are no lung marking at all. Of course, there are red marking, but no other lung shadowing, these small, small lines. And the lung, collapsed lung, partially collapsed. Now, if the lung collapses, its radio density increases. In this case, since it is only a partial collapse, the radio translucency is not very different than the normal, but if the collapse is more, as I will show you in some other X-rays, this will become denser and denser. In some cases, it may just look like a solid structure. And the diaphragm contours, they are normal diaphragms. There is increased lung field, maybe this person is tall otherwise. I don't really think I see emphysema in this patient, but this person must be otherwise tall and this person must have got what we call uh, spontaneous pneumothorax. I'll tell you what is spontaneous pneumothorax. Of course, the, as a self-explanatory, a pneumothorax without any cause, if just it happens, uh, usually because of the rupture of a congenital subpleural blab maybe due to some trauma or just because of uh, because without any trauma and these these blabs the air filled blabs which are present uh, under the pleura congenitally not causing any symptom and one of them might rupture and that may cause this pneumothorax typically these patients present with sudden onset chest pain uh, localized to one side and progressive dyspnea Right, so this is tension, uh, this is pneumothorax. Now you are an expert on pneumothorax, so I think you should have no difficulty picking it up. This one, you appreciate, uh, this is pleural border. And you can see uh, there the two both lobes are actually kept, so you can actually appreciate this transverse fissure here. So this is free air and you can also appreciate a small amount of fluid also here I believe because there is some obliteration of uh, costophrenic angle. Why small effusion? Because you know normally there is some uh, pleural fluid present which is just enough to keep the surfaces wet and keep in contact with the both pleuri in, in contact with each other. So once they displace, this fluid might come down and may make small crescent-like structure. So this is the normal lung, uh, this is the partially collapsed lung. This is air and this is the pleural border. As compared to this side, this is normal. No pleura is actually in contact with the chest wall. So that's why you don't see pleura here. And there is no air. And this lung is less dense as compared to this one because it has got more air in it. So another case of uh, pneumothorax, 
uh, Nemo thorax, when you suspect all X-rays of uh, 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 chest are taken during a phase of inspiration. Patient is usually asked to take a deep breath, to take a deep inspiration and hold the breath when X-ray is done. But in a pneumothorax, sometimes we have to do expiratory film. Because if there is a very small pneumothorax, it might not be visible on an expiratory film. It may be better seen on expiratory film. Now, this is uh, the same pneumothorax, but this time it is on the left side. You can see this part does not show any lung markings. This is pleural border. And this is definitely bigger than what we saw earlier. And this is lung and it has pushed the heart to the opposite side. You can see this trachea, instead of coming straight, it is going rather to the right side. So there is some push of midline structure to the opposite side. Heart shadow is also pushed to the right side because normally if we draw a midline, one third of the heart should be on the right side and two thirds on the left side. In this case, a ratio is actually changed. So there is push of a heart and trachea to slightly to the right side. So there is some element of tension pneumothorax here. This is of course much bigger pneumothorax. You see this entire thing, this, this little bit, this little bit part is lung and it is like solidified. It looks like pneumonia or consolidation and this part is much more denser than this and this entire uh, hemithorax is full of air and this diaphragm is push down and this is air and on this side lung feels a slightly more um, white because it they pushed compressed and heart is also pushed to the left and this is clearly and you do not see the right cardiac border here because normally right cardiac border should be seen clear of right sternal border here but it is not seen it is hidden behind the spine so uh, there is definitely shift of midline structure. This is definitely a pneumothorax, tension pneumothorax. And you all know tension pneumothorax is actually a complication of pneumothorax and it may cause serious uh, respiratory insufficiency. Patient may actually die if a proper procedure is not done. Uh, although we are not discussing a clinical component, but still uh, one thing very relevant which most uh, uh, just whenever these kind of x-rays are shown to the candidates and the next question asked is what should you do if you see this kind of x-ray one thing is that you should definitely uh, puncture the chest with some sterilized instrument maybe help needed to relieve this pressure so that this tension pneumothorax is relieved putting this patient on ventilator would be the worst thing to do so you need to because that is going to increase this uh, tension pneumothorax that is positive pressure ventilation. Uh, so you need to put a needle and remove some air. Air will gush out and patient will immediately feel better. Of course, then you put a proper uh, chest tube, but as an emergency procedure, you can remove air with whatever surgical instrument is available. That is considered to be normal practice. Another x-ray, uh, I Thing, the actual quality is perhaps not very good, but this is uh, pneumothorax and this is the pleural border. And I think, and there's clear signs of tension pneumothorax. Another one, now look at this. This doesn't look like normal lung because it is the entire left lung, upper lobe, and the lower lobe all consolidate or uh, collapse and they have caused a shadow like a solid structure because there is no air, it's complete collapse. Now, I think another point I would like to make is that when we say collapse, there are two types of collapses. One is this, this is secondary collapse. When you describe this X-ray, you must first mention this pneumothorax. So, because pneumothorax is the primary problem here, you must first mention pneumothorax, describe it and then say, because of this pneumothorax, the lung is collapsed toward the hilum, right? To differentiate it from another type of collapse, where there is, for example, bronchial obstruction, and if there is bronchial obstruction, the distal air is absorbed and lung is collapsed. 
So that is very different thing. Uh, I will show you in my next lecture. So this is primarily pneumothorax and secondary lung collapse. See the trachea. Trachea is gone all the way to the right side because of increased pressure here. And heart has been pushed also all the way almost to the middle of the right hemithorax. So this patient would clearly have uh, tension pneumothorax and would require immediate at, uh, attention. This is another person with another uh, big, big pneumothorax and of course these lines, the electrodes and wires, they indicate that the patient must be very serious and maybe, and look at this trachea and uh, this patient has got, I think, endotracheal tube in place and the trachea has moved to the left. This is again pneumothorax, but there's a difference. The difference is that in this case, pleura is much thicker. See, normally pleural border should be very sharp. I say razor sharp, just paper thin. But this one is quite thickened. Pleura is much more thickened. And number two, the underlying lung does not look normal. This is much more, I think, uh, white as compared to normal lung. Perhaps there is some underlying lung disease. Perhaps this patient had tuberculosis or some contusion, some other problem. I, or, or maybe uh, empyema or pleuritis and as a result of that patient developed pneumothorax. So this, there's no doubt that this is pneumothorax, but this is not the usual pneumothorax. Uh, so I think you can actually have some idea that there must be some underlying lung disease, some underlying lung inflammatory condition, lung abscess, cavity or pneumonia, which has ruptured and has caused this pneumothorax. Uh, now you have to think outside the box. What do you see? Do you see anything? Look at the lung fields. Pretty okay. Any pneumothorax? Here? Here? No. Rural border? No. But you have an endotracheal tube in place. So this patient must be serious. And you have ECG electrodes. Again, this patient must be uh, very serious, but the important observation here is this presence of air outside the chest. You see this? This is air outside the chest. Sometime this, this is called subcutaneous pneumothorax. Subcutaneous emphysema, sorry. This is called subcutaneous uh, pneumothorax. No, it is, I think, subcutaneous emphysema. Whatever, it is uh, the presence of air in the subcutaneous tissue. Normally, we don't have free air in the subcutaneous tissue. And very importantly, when you examine the patient, when you touch the patient's chest, you feel a very typical uh, crepitus. You have that very characteristic feeling and the patient will appear bloated. And you can see, and sometimes this can go up and you can actually see air here also. I think, yes, this, this one is air. It has gone into the neck. If uh, air is, uh, goes here, it could cause a respiratory insufficiency. In fact, that must be the reason why this patient is intubated. And surgical emphysema, this is also called surgical emphysema. This may be effect of some trauma, road traffic accident, penetrating chest injuries, and a complication of some surgical procedure. And I've seen many times, whenever somebody has uh, pneumothorax and one of the treatment is chest intubation and when chest tube is inserted some of the these patient uh, there is leakage of air into the subcutaneous tissue so uh, this could be actually a complication of the surgical procedure so I hope it is clear uh, this is called subcutaneous emphysema subcutaneous emphysema because this is in the subcutaneous present air this is very important because this will cause airway obstruction. So that was it and let's uh, now revise the signs of pneumothorax. Uh, we have sh I've shown you multiple axes and just to complete our modules and now let's list all those signs of pneumothorax here. Complete absence of normal lung markings on the lateral side of the chest cage. Why on the lateral side? Because lungs are attached to the 
bronchial tree on the medial side so whenever there is free air lung will always collapse to what is the hilum so all always on the latter side there is air and there is free air and why do we say this is free air because there is no lung marking at all distinct pleural border i think you can never be sure about the diagnosis of pneumothorax unless you can see this distinct pleural border uh, and collapse lung opacity depending upon the size of pneumothorax lungs would be collapsed partially or fully if the lungs are completely collapsed they might cause a solid opacity but and then it will become very small and it will be near hilum and if uh, it is small uh, pneumothorax then lungs that sided lung will become slightly more opaque compared to the normal lung and shift of midline structures uh, heart and trachea only if there is large uh, pneumothorax causing tension pneumothorax subcutaneous air shadows in subcutaneous uh, pneumothorax uh, i just showed you uh, and clinically you can feel uh, with your hand causes of pneumothorax i think this is perhaps the last slide and uh, because we're discussing pneumothorax in the examination you would be asked the causes of pneumothorax spontaneous primary pneumothorax what is this spontaneous of course is something which just happens without any obvious precipitating factor primary pneumothorax means they do not have underlying lung disease they have no symptoms they're not smoker or they may not be smoker although many of them they are actually so somebody who did not have any underlying lung disease no symptom just one day maybe when the person was going to his work just find the feel the chest pain and suddenly followed by uh, dyspnea and this is spontaneous primary pneumothorax it is caused by congenital subpleural blebs of air which do not cause symptom but when they rupture then they cause pneumothorax and many of these patient they the blebs rupture because of maybe little barrow trauma or maybe because of smoke emphysema is one cause because in emphysema you may have emphysematous bully and one of them may rupture and cause pneumothorax barrow trauma uh, pressure changes uh, of course second due to blast and other things there could be pneumothorax ruptured lung cavity if somebody has tuberculosis or lung abscess or other cavity and that might rupture i'll have another module on lung cavities and then road traffic accident and iatrogenic iatrogenic means as a result of some surgical procedure uh, for example patient had pleural effusion and somebody when tap the fluid remove fluid did not seal uh, it properly and some air entered and there's some many other procedures uh, that may also cause this intubation that may also cause pneumothorax sometimes uh, that completes our module on uh, these the two conditions copd and pneumothorax including subcutaneous pneumothorax thank you very much this has been professor aziz rahman from medstand and i really look forward to see you in my next module and the next one is again going to be on radiology for internist and this is going to cover uh, i guess pneumonias and collapses i am going to cover all common conditions one by one but next module will be on pneumonias and collapses thank you very much see you in my next video